This is Twit. I don't know why it's called the pixie dust attack, but it's an, a new, well, it's a revelation about how to attack the WPS protocol on a number of Wi-Fi routers. And we've covered the problems with WPS in years past. In fact, if I'm not going to go back into excruciating detail of the protocol only because we did that. On episode 337 of, of this podcast, Security Now, which was January 25th of 2012, so a little more than three years ago, our, the title of that podcast was WPS, A Troubled Protocol. And there we broke down in detail how it works and why it just was never really very solid. Um, you may remember the, the name Reaver. I remember when I saw that again, I, I thought, oh, yeah, I remember Reaver. Reaver was one of the tools that, that surfaced back then for cracking WPS. Some changes were made. Uh, basically, there was. It turned out not to be nearly as strong as it was believed. WPS essentially uses an eight-digit PIN, which is normally printed on the label, you know, along with the serial number and the MAC address for the router. Right, that, you know, right next to that, it'll say WPS PIN. And the idea is that, for example, if you have a WPS aware client like Windows, you can pair your your Windows system to the Wi-Fi router just by typing in this eight-digit PIN from the label of the router into a dialog on the client, and you're sort of magically done. You don't have to worry about um, what the router's password has been configured to. So it makes that easier. And there's, there's also a button you can also press, and it's actually one or the other. So some routers just have a button where it's like, okay, within a short window, you can do pairing, otherwise type in this eight-digit pin. Well, eight digits seems like a lot to brute force because we know just, you know, eight digits of decimal is... Uh, what is that? I didn't think of it. Ahead. Uh, a, a billion? A million? Anyway, it's a lot. Um, and uh, uh, it turns out, though, that there was a weakness in the protocol where if you divided it up into two four-digit pieces, you could, you could like do half of the protocol with only four digits, which dramatically reduced the the total number you had to try because you essentially you could do four digits at a time. You could do just half. And in fact, the eighth digit is actually a checksum digit. So it doesn't really even count for the second four. It's only really three. So there's only a thousand of those and 10,000 of the first. So some adjustments were made to try to fix it. And you know, it's sort of, it's limped along. Some routers have it. Higher end routers have removed it because it just sort of has made people feel uncomfortable. Well, so the news of this week, three years after all of this, is that a security researcher, Dominique Bongard, discovered, he looked closely at some actual implementations of the detailed protocol on some popular routers. And what he discovered was that it was much worse, <laughs> of course, than we thought. Um, any of these sorts of protocols requires, and how many times have we heard me say this, a good source of random numbers. Cryptography, almost without fail. I'm not sure if I can think of an area where there isn't at some point in a protocol the need for entropy, because even though we're we're protecting the the protocol with with crypto stuff, normally it's a secret that we're protecting, and and it's not the same secret. Typically, protocols grab a random number, and then that, for example, we were talking about it last week, where if if you wanted to communicate privately, you'd pick a random number, use that as your key for bulk encryption. Then you'd use public key cryptography to encrypt the random number. Well, obviously, if that random number wasn't random, 
you have absolutely no protection, none. So all, you know, despite all the other mechanisms in place, if you don't actually have really unpredictable random numbers, you have no protection. And it turns out that as a consequence of, in some cases, it's got to be a bug or in, uh, or just them not care. Apparently, the, the implementers not caring very much. At least several routers that have been looked at are beyond bad. And the examples of them being bad are what hooked me on this. Because, for example, Raylink access points um, end up using two nonces. Remember that you know, nonce is the cryptographic term for a a one-term random value, um, a, uh, a, a, a number once technically is what not stands for. But the idea is that it can't be known, can't be predictable. It's, it, it is, it's got to be, it, it, oftentimes it doesn't actually have to be random, but there's, it has to be no way for an attacker to have an idea what it could be. However, that ends up being arranged. And sometimes just having, you know, having a good source of true entropy is the way to do that. Um, but in the protocol, there are two 128-bit nonces called ES1 and ES2. And again, back in that podcast, 337, I go over this in detail. So anyone who wants more can get it there. Um, they must be unpredictable for this handshake to work. There is also a publicly chosen and like visible random number, which which the the two endpoints share, um, and uh, that's called the enrollee nonce. Okay, so this Raylink access point uses for ES one and ES two, which have to be unpredictable, uses for both of them the value zero, which is, is you know, not, not, meets no criteria. It turns out that, that these nonces are mixed in with some other known values and hashed in order, in order to produce intermediate results. And so no RA link access point is secure if it has WPS enabled. There is not, so now what we have is a known offline attack which can listen to any negotiation with WPS. Even an attacker can initiate one, generate some protocol, and then in just cut through it like butter. Immediately determine what the access point's pin is and then associate with it and you're on the network. So RA link router owners, you absolutely turn, d disable, turn off WPS if you haven't already. And that was our recommendation three years ago because it just wasn't safe. Okay, but there's two more examples that are better. Well, it's hard, it can't be worse than zero, uh, but still d demonstrate a failure to appreciate the the cryptographic importance of entropy. And unfortunately, this one is Broadcom uh, routers with e uh, ECOS devices. Those two secrets, the ES1 and ES2 secrets, they're generated immediately after the enrollee nonce. And the function that is used is a simple linear congruential pseudo random number generator with no external entropy. So and we've talked about that before. A, a, a linear congruential pseudo random number generator basically takes a value and multiplies it by, it, it takes the current value, multiplies it by some unknown, and then adds an unknown constant, adds another constant. And that's the next value. So it is what it is is entirely deterministic. If you know one value and you know those constants, you know the next value and the next value and the next value and so forth. So here in, in, the, in the Broadcom router, remember I said that the, the supposedly random nonces, ES1 and ES2, 
are generated immediately after the enrollee nonce. Well, the enrollee nonce is public. It's published. It's in the air. So once again, this can be cut through instantly. Someone initiates a WPS handshake, um, gets the enrollee nonce, can immediately from the, knowing what the PRNG in the Broadcom router is, determine what ES1 and ES2 are, and crack the pin and acquire access to your network. So again, disable WPS. And the last example is Realtek routers. And I, we don't have model numbers, so I don't want to over panic people who I have a real tech monitor, uh, a real tech access point. Um, the chipsets may vary, the firmware versions may vary, but these three instances of these three routers were used in the security presentation. The real tech access point uses the time in seconds from January 30th, 1970. Um, that is, so however, whatever duration it's been from January 30th, 1970 in seconds until this um, protocol is exercised, it uses those to generate these three values. It uses the same generator to make the enrollee nonce, which that thereby publishes the value that of time that it thinks it now is, um, and uses the same time value or or the value from current time for ES1 and ES2. So if the entire exchange occurs within the same second, then e ES1 and ES2, which are the in are well, e I'm sorry, ES1 and ES2 will be the same as the enrolling nonce which is published in the air as, 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 at, the, at the initial start of this negotiation. So, again, no mystery there. And if, if it doesn't, if, if, if the second counter rolls over, then they are literally one greater in value than the enrollee nonce. So, again, no protection. Um, the bad news is it's not like all routers have had this checked. These three routers were found to be ridiculously poor in their actual implementation of a protocol that was already very troublesome. So the, the lesson here is this is not something – WPS is, is really not something you want to leave enabled all the time. Yes, it's convenient, but we know what a problem convenience so often is and – this is another example of that. So, you know, classic security implementation problems uh, in, in, you know, low-end consumer routers.